All right, hello everybody. Uh, <clears throat> we are gonna go through the drag and drop editor within Customer IO, and I, we're gonna focus on just the first three blocks here. I didn't wanna cram it all in a single video because I felt like it would take too long. So we're gonna keep things short, and we're just gonna focus on three elements at a time. So <clears throat> this is a drag and drop editor within Customer IO, meaning there's no code, or at least there doesn't have to be. And you simply choose the content types that you want to drop into your email here. So I've got these first three already dropped in, but it's, it's drag and drop because that's what you literally do. I would choose my tile over here and I'd drop it into uh, the canvas. All right, so let's look at the title block first. So a title block is essentially a text block, but it is, has, it's predefined to have either H1, two, or three tags. So when you first drop it in, it's an H1 tag, and you can choose two or three. You can't make it a paragraph. You can't make it other than those three. So they've dedicated something specifically towards titles. Uh, <clears throat> everything else, though, is pretty much the same as a text block. You can change the font and the weight and the size. Uh, you can choose the text color that you have as well as what the color is if there's a link involved. There's obviously alignment, uh, line height, letter spacing, and they've added recently text direction, uh, <clears throat> which uh, hasn't done anything at least for me so far. So uh, <clears throat> there's also some block options with this. So I can add padding on all sides. If I want to, to be more advanced and say I don't want any padding on the bottom, you can click more options and then customize it on each side. And then lastly, there's a, a hide on desktop or mobile toggle. If you're wanting to change a little bit of the format of how uh, users see your email on different devices. All right, pretty straightforward in terms of text. All right, let's jump into how images work in Customer IO. Okay, so I've dragged this image uh, <clears throat> block in. And the first thing it has me do is browse to choose an image. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, <clears throat> when you choose an image, you get taken into this screen. And this is, as of right now, I think they're changing this soon. But as of right now, this is the only place where you can find and store uh, images in Customer IO. So what that means is if I were to upload, I, I went to my folder, I uploaded this little Twitter logo, and it's right here. If I go into other places in Customer IO, I can't find it. I can only find it within a drag and drop editor uh, in Customer IO. So it's a little bit quirky. Uh, I think eventually they're gonna make this a better experience, but for now, you, you just kind of like get used to it. So we're gonna insert this image. Now, <clears throat> As soon as you insert an image, by default, it's gonna auto set the width. And what that means is, depending on your image size, it will either fill the width of the space or it will uh, show you the width of the image itself, whichever is smaller, okay? So in this example, I've got an email canvas that is 600 pixels wide. My Twitter image here is 512 pixels wide. So you can see that it didn't quite fill the space where it automatically sized it down to this 85%. I can turn this off and then I can choose to blow it up, which obviously will uh, disrupt quality, or I can shrink it <clears throat> if I so choose, okay? And I can also decide whether I want it to go full width on mobile. There's an alignment setting. Uh, <clears throat> there's a dynamic image, meaning that <clears throat> if you want to pull in uh, snippets from an other area of Customer I.O. so that uh, you only have to update an image in one place and it carries over into loads of other places, you can do that. Um, we might do a different video on that. So we'll just leave that untoggled for now. If I decide I need to change my image, it gives me the option here. There's a little bit of uh, effects that I can do to the image as well, like cropping, drawing, adding some text. Uh, as a you know designer and everything, you probably want to do all of that uh, in other editors that are probably stronger. But if 
you know, resources are limited, you have access here to uh, edit your image. And maybe we'll go through all of those in a different video. Alt text, uh, which is always important. And then uh, if you want to choose your, if you want your image to link to something, uh, you can uh, open a web page, make a call SMS, your standard stuff, send an email. And then you've got the same blocking options like you did on the headers, right? So you can add padding. Uh, you can hide on desktop and mobile. And uh, if you have special styling attributes that you want to apply to these blocks, you can do that too. Okay. All right. Uh, let's look at buttons here. So the buttons, the last one for this video. Uh, <clears throat> Obviously, the primary thing is a link, so you'll choose the type of link and put in the URL. <clears throat> it also does an auto width, although you can change that if you want. Uh, auto width means it'll just really size it to the text. In order to change the text, you just click in the text within the button. So join our webinar now, and you can see that the button expands uh, based on what you've got written there. Uh, you can uh, do normal configurations like font family and weight and size, the background color of the, the button, uh, the text color of the button, and then <clears throat> alignment. And then you can choose the border radius. So if you want a more circular button, you can uh, increase the radius around the corners and that'll make give you more of that circular feel if that matches your branding. Then there's content padding. So this is the padding between the text and the edge of the button. So if I add top padding here, you can see it added space on the top of the button. Um, and so you can configure how you, that you want, whether you want it all sides the same or uh, different options to make it, you know, depending on your own preferences. You can change the border. So if I wanted a, a border of some kind, I can do that. Block options, again, are the same. This is for this whole area. So if I want to add padding, um, but remove, say, the bottom padding, that's how I can do that. And the same thing, high desktop, mobile, add special uh, CSS attributes if that's uh, what I want to do. All right. Okay, so those are the top three content blocks within the drag and drop editor within Customer Now. Hope that's been helpful overview. Uh, we will jump, jump into the next three shortly. Take care.